Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, Kanishka and I are really excited to make a video discussing some of the retirement announcements from the top Canadian skaters. So we will be discussing Patrick Chan, Megan DeHamel and Eric Radford, there's Dylan Moscovich, as well as Ilaj Balde and Liam Theris. Kanishka, are you ready to do this video with me? Yes. Yay, I'm excited. Now, I feel like we have to start off this video by talking about the legendary Patrick Chan. I feel like he's going to be the most missed out of all of those skaters. What do you think? I think so, too. Like, as we were discussing earlier before we started this video, like, he is a 10-time Canadian national champion, a record for of all time. Mm -hmm. And he was also known for his skating skills, among other accomplishments that he has done. So I'll let you start off, and then I'll just try to go from there. Sure. When I think of Patrick Chan, I think a lot of us discuss how great his skating skills are. And I know that word, uh, that phrase is thrown out a lot. But I'm not sure if everybody watching this video really understands what we mean by skating skills. So I wanted to take some time to discuss that. So first, let's talk about edge quality. So his edges when he's skating, if this is a blade, this is the ice, rarely are they ever flat. He's always like at a deep edge, which is really difficult if you're not a skater, and I'm not, by the way. It's really difficult to stand upright while skating on a deep edge. And the amount of crossovers he does is a lot less than what we see from other top men in the sport, especially if they're like trying to gain speed for doing all of their quad jumps. And how do I put it this way? He's able to gain so much speed by doing so few crossovers, which really uh, shows the strength that he has in his legs, whereas other skaters need the crossovers to gain speed to uh, lead them into their elements. So there's that. I also want to talk about his step sequences. They're so good. Edges are so clean. And I think what makes Patrick's step sequences stand out is that, for me at least, I love that he always has good posture while doing those deep edges because I think a lot of other men have pretty good step sequences like they have deep edges you know very clean rotations but they a lot of times they tend to lose their posture and they hunch over whereas Patrick Chan can uh, maintain a straight back and project outwards to the audience so that's what I think of when I say Patrick Chan has amazing amazing skating skills yeah, I also, just going off of that, I think that his skating had such a quality that you just kind of get blown away just in his interpretation. I think he just added like this natural performance quality, something very similar to Michelle Kwan, where it's not so much about theatrics, it's more about like performing whatever is in your heart. And I think that's kind of what came across to me um, immediately when I first saw Patrick Chan skate, which was back in 2008, Skate America, I believe. And I think he skated to the Four Seasons back then. That's right. Um, and that was the first time we first took notice of him. And it's kind of great to see someone stick around in the sport for as long as he did. And I think it we have to credit some of his coaches from times in the past, including the Canadian legend Osborne Coulson, like, who was like a multiple national champion himself. And he always has said, like, he saw potential in Patrick even from a young age. And how correct was he to see now how much Patrick has accomplished? He also has really good taste in programs. Surprisingly, one of my favorites is some of his later programs. So I like the uh, Hallelujah long program as well. Same with the program composed by his friend Eric Radford, who we'll discuss a little later. And then there's the... Is it Blackbird or Freebird short program? Blackbird. So Blackbird. It's like, it's like a, it was like a combination of two different Beatles songs. Yeah. So. And then I think one of my personal favorites, just because I like a more playful program, is the short program by Michael Buble, which is Mac the Knife, if I'm yep. correct. So, yeah, he just has overall really good taste in programs. I think some other skating fans will appreciate some of his more classical music choices. I'm just not a classical music kind of person, but it, it seems like he's always put up programs that you're, anyone is bound to enjoy. Yep. And we have to talk about the fact that he was able to repeat as world champion. 
which is really difficult to do. Especially in during the time that he started coming off as like one of the top contenders. And I think he was one of the only skaters that was able to win the three world championships leading up to the Olympics. Obviously, the pressure of the Olympics did get to him, unfortunately, but he was able to maintain three world championships going in to mm -hmm. the Olympics. Yeah, and in speaking about winning those world championships, I think a key uh, factor of him uh, becoming a champion was being able to land the quad toe consistently. And he definitely changed the game up when he started doing the quad toe in the short and then two in the long program. So yep. quad toe, triple toe, back in like the 2012-2013 era, they were landed so well. And I'm happy to say that now we can um, see Patrick Chan listed as Olympic gold medalist with the team event in, from South Korea. Definitely, yeah. I think that that's one title that he really wanted. And I think any, actually all the Canadian team from this year's Olympics, I think they kind of made a pact that like if they were to go back to the Olympics, then that's going to be their priority. And what a priority it was, and they accomplished what they were going after. So congratulations. Yay, Patrick, you will be missed. But just know that we all loved you. And then Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford will also be missed dearly. They are together the seven-time Canadian national champions. That is major, and the sport is going to be different without them. Definitely, yeah. To be honest, I haven't watched as much pair skating as I probably should as a skating fan, so that's definitely not my expertise. But I remember watching Megan Duhamel compete even as a single skater. Like, she competed at Four Continents back in 2006 in Colorado Springs. So her career has definitely spanned two different disciplines for over a decade. And to see her continuing to, like, compete for, from the Torino cycle all the way through the cycle here in Korea that we just went through, amazing. That's and right. That's and when I think of this team, I think of, if I were to think of a legacy that they left behind, I'd have to say it would be them pushing the technical boundaries. I mean, side-by-side -side triple LUTs, to do that in the short and in the free program for many, many seasons consistently is so difficult. I'm so proud of them for, you know, uh, making that one of their trademarks. They also were able to successfully land the throw quad Salkow and once at the Olympic Games in Korea. So that was amazing. Uh, for a short Peter period of time, they also attempted the throw triple axle. So Ooh, they were pushing technical boundaries. There's no doubt about that. I think they also attempted the quad LUTs at one of those, like, Canadian fall comp. Like, you know, like... The throw quad LUTs? Throw quad LUTs, I think, preceding to, like, the Grand Prix season one. Wow. Um, but you got to witness um, a throw quad at the 2016 Worlds um, in Boston, in the TD Garden. So that must have been quite the um, program to watch. Yeah. And yet, uh, what's also a, a great achievement for them is um, repeating as world champions, especially considering that the second time they won, they were actually not the favorites to win the title, even though they were reigning champions. Because that was the season that the Russians came back and Aljona came back with Bruno. And Sway and Han were gaining momentum. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then one quick random thank you to Megan and Eric is that Megan Duhamel is actually a great um, activist for an advocate for veganism and you know me I'm vegan so I appreciate what she does there and then I'm also part of the LGBTQ community so I must um, thank and commend Eric, Eric Radford, Radford coming out and telling his story so that's just some random bits yeah, congratulations to both of them on their marriages. Ah, it's so exciting to hear about. And also Eric Radford is so talented outside of skating as well. Like he's able to compose such beautiful pieces of music. I feel like he should go into like um, composing music or maybe even choreography for yeah. skaters. 
there's definitely room in that business for either of them, really. Mm-hmm. Looking um, forward to seeing what they do. Me too. Megan Duhamel it sounds like she wants to eventually become a coach, so she'd be really good in that role. Yeah, if anything, she was coaching that team throughout <laughs> the, over the years. So, yeah, are we ready to move on? Yes. So there's Dylan Moscovich and then Lubov. Not gonna try to pronounce her last name because I would butcher it. So they have announced that they are split as a team and Dylan Moscovich is retired from competitive skating and Lubov is going to consider her options. But Dylan has been a- around in the sport for quite some time as well. He was able to go to the Olympics with Kirsten Moore Towers. They won the silver medal in the team event there in Sochi. So that's something to be really proud of for him. Definitely. Like I've always loved Dylan Moscovich skating, wh- whether it was with Kirsten Moore Towers or Lubov. And... It's so unfortunate that he got the, like he started getting injuries like around this Olympic cycle because he was definitely considered one of the contenders to earn one of those Olympic berths. But I think the injury definitely did prevent him from doing what we know that he's so capable of. And then it just continued on like it just kind of like spiraled on at Four Continents this year. This past year, or this year, it's 2018 still, Kanishka. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just unfortunate. Um, I would have loved to see him and Lubov continue, but I understand that there's only, like, this sport is like, you have like a certain age that you can like compete at, and then after that, your body just starts to um, take a beating, you know? It's not like in football where you can like perform forever or compete. It mm-hmm. forever. So, again, I kudos to him for sticking around for as long as he has, and I'm gonna, I'm really gonna miss his skating skills. So, me too. And yeah, the older you get, I'm already experiencing this. The older you get, the longer it takes for your body to bounce back from an injury. Sometimes even the slightest, smallest injury. So, I totally understand someone's decision to retire as they get older. And then also, a lot of people talk about how Canadians, how or how Canada has a lot of top pair teams. And Dylan Moscovich has always been in the conversation, whether it was with Kirsten or with Lubov. So kudos to him. And it's really unfortunate he did not make the Olympic team with Lubov for the Olympic Games in South Korea, when a lot of us, myself included, were expecting them to qualify. Especially after the previous season's Worlds, where they actually were the top Canadian pair. Mm -hmm. So so sad. And just a quick random bit again. um, I really have to say that one of my favorite programs from this Olympic cycle was their um, free program from last season to um, Tell Me You Love... Not Tell Me You Love Me. That's Demi Lovato. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) uh, when you say you love me, I'm Josh Groban. Like, it was one of my favorite programs um, of that season. So... um, I'm going to miss the two of them because they they actually kind of made each other whole in many ways. Yeah. You know what my favorite program is from Dylan Moscovich? It's a short program with Kirsten Moore Towers, and it's the upbeat one. It's where their outfits were black and white, and they had it for two seasons in a row. I'm not going to try to remember the name of it, but if you guys know, put it in the comments. That was my favorite program from Dylan Moscovich. Okay, time to move on to some of the men. So just yesterday, Liam Ferris announced his retirement. Oh, poor guy. Every time I think of him, I think poor guy. Like, uh, so sad. Like, I, I, for some reason, like, he, he actually strikes a chord with me as well because a couple, like, a year ago, I started having these, like, rehash memories from my childhood where... Um, Micah, Mika, Micah, that song that he used for his short program was playing in my head. And then all of a sudden, like I watched Canadian nationals and like, that's that song that I was hearing. Um, but it's so unfortunate, like, and sad because he had like two deja vu moments with his short program, which really were heartbreaking because he, he had all the potential really to like at least be in the top three, and then after that boot issue, 
it just looked like things went out of control. And then also the fact that he gave up his spot at the world championships like a few years back. Don't remind me about, about that. <laughs> like, that's great sportsmanship. But I, I also feel like as a sportsman, like you kind of need to be a little bit more like, I, I deserve this spot. He as earned well. that spot. Yeah. So, yeah. I actually think, yeah, I think that Liam's overall skating quality is very comparable to Patrick Chan's. Yeah. Very close. Uh, I think point blank what kept him from performing better or competing better was um, the jumps. The quad was not his friend. Oh, no, your cat. Your cat can do whatever she wants. Uh, The quad was not his friend. The triple axle was not his friend. But boy, his raw skating skills were there. Just like Patrick chose some really beautiful pieces of skate too as well. Also was a little bit of a performer. Um, uh, yeah, it's just unfortunate. My favorite program of his, by the way, was his um, recent La La Land free program. So we like the same season, huh? Yeah. You like La La Land? I like Happy Ending? Like, yeah. Yeah, and speaking of which, uh, I do want to discuss this. I really wish he could have been at the 2016 Worlds of Boston. I was there. It, it was a shocker that he decided to withdraw, you know, and to be replaced by Nam Nguyen in hopes of getting three spots. Yeah, getting three spots. That did not happen. So I really wish he would have gone there to experience Worlds for himself because. He still hasn't been to a World Figure Skating Championships. He has been to an Olympics, so that's good. Didn't do so well. But uh, hopefully, um, you know, he finds some happiness in whatever he chooses to do next. I was reading the press release from Skate Canada, and it sounds like he already has a job lined up at a bank in Vancouver and continue and wants to continue being an influence on um, skating youth. In Canada, so hopefully, you know his legacy will um, play out in future skaters of Canada. There you go, and you know can, uh, Canadian coaches, you know, like sometimes they might have heartbreaking moments, aka Brian Orser, but then good things come out of disappointments, you know. So mm-hmm. we shall see what Liam Ferris has in store for us. That's correct. And now this last skater, Elaj Balde. Um, I wanted you to discuss more because you've seen him skate more than I have. The few times I've seen him competitive and skating in exhibitions, he's just been a firecracker. Like, he kind of reminds me of Keegan Messing. I I say that only because I've seen Keegan skate more. But he definitely plays off of the energy from the audience. And he loves putting on a show. And I think I've seen him skate one clean program. And when his jumps are on, like, the whole program is explosive and exciting. Isn't that right? That is correct. Yeah, he's a he's definitely a showman. And I think that's what kind of like draws you into him is that showman quality. Like whether he lands all his jumps or he falls here and there, he always works the crowd. And I think that's why he's always invited to the gala, even if he places ninth at an event, because he knows how to bring the audience. Um, and... We kind of miss that in skating, even though like right now we do have vocals that are allowed in skating. Sometimes people still tend to like skate a little bit more inward. But something that I've always appreciated appreciated from Elijah is that he always performed outward. And as one of the Canadian commentators said in at, during the U- Canadian Nationals, like there's something so special about his like skating. Like it just draws in the audience, whether it's the jumps are there or not. And it's surprising that he has not made like a major world championships, I believe. Mm-hmm. So it's just heartbreaking. And that's why I was thinking like maybe he'll stick around one more time. Cause he did have a little moment at Canadian nationals, but I know for a fact that he will probably continue spreading figure skating to people that we never thought would lace up a pair of skates. Yeah, I think in the press release I read from Skate Canada, um, it sounds like Elage and Liam want to work together on that same program to encourage uh, Canadian youth in skating. So There you go. That's good. Yeah. Do you know how everyone says that 
the pro circuit is dead now because there's not a demand for it, I feel like it could come alive in Canada. You have so many like amazing skaters who are recently retired. I mean, I think you can come up with skating shows for television or tours that are not just, you know, stars on ice and maybe it could be successful, you know, started off in Canada and maybe other countries will catch on. I know I wanted, I remember when I was younger, I kind of wanted to like start my own skating show, but then I don't, I can't even glide on the ice. So it's like, what can I do? <laughs> you know? So skaters, if you guys want to start a show, contact me. Mm, you know where to find him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's end on an interesting note. I think you and I said we were going to discuss this uh, a while back, but let's just do it here. What does the future of Canadian men's figure skating look like? I think it will take some time for them to really establish themselves again, but I do see a lot of potential in the Keegan Messings and the Nam Nguyen's, even though Nam Nguyen has been struggling quite a bit lately. But Keegan Messing seems to be coming on strong now. Like He seems to be like feeling more confident and realizes that with the retirement of Patrick Chen, he is considered one of the top men going in, and hopefully he can withstand the pressure. But I do feel like it's going to take a couple of years or maybe another Olympic cycle sometimes just to establish that three spots again. But I have no doubt that with the potential that I have seen from the times in the past, they'll be at least able to attain two spots for the world championships and hopefully two for the next Olympics as well. I think the goal is two spots for the men's. Um, we It's going to be interesting to see the guys... Mm-hmm fight for the Canadian title yeah. next year. So we have Nicholas Nadeau, Keegan Messing, Nam Nguyen. They're probably yeah. all going to want it. Um, and my new personal favorite is Joseph Fan. And you know, I like Nicholas Nadeau, so... You do. But no, we'll see who- me, I am Joseph Fan all the way. And he has not had his, you know, big moment yet, but I think it's coming. And Nick Nadeau has had his moment with the Elvis program that really got everyone's attention. But I think there's a lot more that he has to give. And it'll be great to see exactly how these men that we just listed, the hefty list of people that we just listed, compete. Because next season, that national title is open for, gra- for really anybody. It's up for grabs. And we'll see who ends up seizing that moment. Mm-hmm. And those men that we just listed all of them have many years remaining in the sport. I mean, knock on wood, but... (laughs) There you go. So, you know, I I do think there is time to get Canadian uh, men's figure skating back up there on a competitive level internationally. It's just going to, you know, probably take a year or two. Definitely. Yay, Kanishka, we made it through this video. Thank you so much for doing it with me. Of course, yeah. I feel like I could have gone into a little bit more analysis, but I think that we could... I do that another time. So, absolutely okay. And thank you, everyone, for watching this video. You'll catch me in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.